Hello and welcome to the Plone Newsroom, a uh, episode number six, recorded on what day is today? The um, last day of February, Philip. We're just in time to excellent the monthly schedule. February twenty eighth, twenty twenty. You're listening to Philip Bauer from Munich, and my uh, uh, and me myself and I is Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. But you are not in Munich, uh, Philip. No, I'm in uh, in Frankfurt, New Eisenberg, New Eisenberg, uh, just for some holiday, ho uh, school holidays. Um, yeah, um, but if the world still stands next week, I'll be back in Munich, and the next episode will. Yeah. Um, we we just managed to record this episode in uh, February, so we can s still say uh, that we're doing one episode each month. It's but still a monthly we, podcast. Yeah, we, we promised to do the next episode in like two to three weeks and not in four weeks. So we're going to be a bit more better with this schedule and keep this one short, uh, keep it to at 30 minutes, hopefully. Uh, so, um, obviously, Plone Newsroom, a podcast about Plone, the open source content management written in Python. Um, we're not doing a whole lot of screen sharing today. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're probably not missing out. Yeah, uh, we, we, have a, we have a small web corner on uh, plone.org slash newsroom, uh, where you can find links to the add-ons or packages we do discuss. Uh, also, all the older episodes and links to the audio only and video versions. Yeah, and, and a longish comment by you, Fred, uh, about our last episode where we talked about page uh, composite page builders, and you wrote a whole pop, uh, podcast length <laughs> worth of uh, yeah, yeah. comments. I... So um, yeah, well, we should we should split up the the listing in in maybe a podcast page per per episode where we can add on things because then we had a great conversation, but in the end it was like, oh, I didn't say this, we forgot about this, and you still have this. It really. It was really too big, so we're also not going to do a big, uh, a big theme or or feature uh, this time. So yeah. yeah, sorry for the shift to the end of the month. We had some personal health uh, reasons, no scolds and more. Um, on the other hand, if this had been March uh, already, we would have had another three days. It's still February, so we would have saved it if it was a normal month. But then it's February, of course. Yeah. So, Philip. Let's we're not doing a, a large uh, feature this time. No. Um, we're also not going to discuss the world situation regarding the Ukraine or uh, or COVID or uh, climate crisis or um, like I, I just one thing. I uh, learned a new world word and a new hobby: doom scrolling. I didn't do that during the pandemic, but uh, now with this situation in Ukraine, uh, I'm totally into doom scrolling. Uh, it's the only fun thing about it is that word, I think. But yeah. okay, let's let's go into community news. Community members, Philip, we've got new Plone Foundation members. Three yes, people, a all welcome to all people we know for we've known for a long time already. <laughs> Um, it's, it's still amazing sometimes the names that pop up indeed for people that that have that were so modest that they didn't apply uh, themselves or that, that it took uh, the rest of the community many years to convince them to still apply. Yeah, well, uh, there's a life cycle to that. You come become a, a member of the community and you develop add-ons and you be you make do a term on the board. Uh, you organize a conference and then you become a foundation member and then you drop out. Uh, but let's not do that. Uh, these uh, three, Piero Nicoli, <laughs> Giulia um, Ghisini, uh, and Alessandro Pisa, Pisa have all three been with Plone for quite a while. And there's something funny about that list. Um, the, uh, Giulia and Piero work for Red Turtle. Alessandro used to work for Red Turtle. And they all three live in Ferrara, Italy, a beautiful town uh, north of Bologna, about uh, an hour by train. And, and well, well known for its location uh, of Plone, of Plone Cons. Yeah, they did the last Plone <laughs> conference uh, in, in, in Ferrara. And so, so are we doing this by, by town now? Next year, it's going to be three people from Bologna. And then I don't, how, how, which, which direction are we going? North, south, east, west? Um, don't, I, I don't see a policy there. Um, but maybe, um, maybe, for, the, for, maybe for, the, for the membership committee to focus on different towns. But then I do hope we, we get a bit more periodically than doing that every year. I hope we can find some new Plone Foundation members or people that are, have been active in the Plone community already for a long, long time, but for some reason not applied uh, uh, as for a foundation membership in, yeah. in the next uh, few months again. So welcome. 
Yeah. But you you were already there for for many years. But thank yeah, you for so. your effort and thank you for being part of the Plan community. I'd say you, you people are old news, but we still uh, pretend that you you really knew, and we're really happy. Um, so uh, there has been a sprint on the Plan Org relaunch again uh, since this last uh, month. Second or third sprint now, I think. Yeah, third one. Yeah. And uh, so, so um, what is what again? Uh, back, back, coming back to Ferrara. Um, uh, the people at Red Turtle uh, did an excellent job uh, preparing an outline for content structure and landing pages like why Plone, Plone solutions we can do with Plone, getting started, community services, and so on. Uh, and that, that was super exciting and helpful to see. And they prepared a great presentation where we can now start putting all that together with Volto blocks and have like um, almost ready ideas how to create the uh, new 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 content for the new Plone Org website. That's on the on the content side. Yeah, technically uh, interesting, which is also maybe yeah, I think also originated uh, uh, from uh, Red Turtle and a presentation. Uh, uh, done at the PlanConf 2019 already, where they uh, had a demo of uh, a blocks conversion tool, or at least a way to convert uh, uh, rich texts in, in Plone 5.2 and earlier uh, to the block structure that was at the time built for the uh, still now uh, uh, active blocks, the rich text block editing module in Volto uh, Draft.js. That will be replaced by, uh, by Slate. Uh, and therefore, also the block conversion tool has been updated. It's still inspired by uh, the version from two th or three years ago. Erico Andrei has been working on that. And we are eating our own dog food and, and, and trying to use that blocks conversion tool on the new.plone.org website uh, migration. But I think also uh, people in the community are already testing it and battle testing it uh, on conversions for other uh, photo sites. So that's a good synergy. It's a good synergy that these things are now happening. We have a new tool and we try to, to test it on as many uh, corner cases and situations as possible. Yeah, and it works like a charm. It's an NPM package, easy to install. We put the link into, in the show notes. It's uh, uh, called blocks-conversion-tool. And it's really uh, nice. It runs on a port and you can, there's a form. We talked about this, uh, I think, two uh, episode ago. Uh, and we uh, now works fine with images which are inside titles and stuff like that. So all looks fine. But there are two tiny things that I'd like to mention that when you are uh, migrating, uh, my one of my big topics, migrating. Uh, so there are when you migrate a classic site to Volto, like Plon 4 or Plon 5 site to Volto, there's like lots of things you have to think about. For example, there are no portlets and so on, and there is no default drop-down navigation in Volto. Uh, there is an add-on, I think. There's uh, an add-on for drop-downs as well. Yep. Yeah, but there are like two things uh, that are one is easy, but it's 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 a biggie. Uh, there are collections, but the default solution to use something like collections in Volto is to just use a page with a listing block. Um, and we will have code that automatically does that. So, um, it's not merged in uh, uh, yet in, into the Plone Org setup and will obviously make it available for everyone, uh, but it will allow you to, have, to automatically migrate uh, collections to documents with a listing block that is configured sa the same way as the, um, the collection was. And the yeah. second thing, which is a bit more tricky, are obviously default pages. One of the yeah. main differences between yeah, about the... default pages. I had that uh, two weeks ago. I was on Discord, and uh, and someone was asking, "Yeah, I want to structure something, but now I see I see a folder uh, uh, and I see a page." And I was like, hmm, "Should the folder now not have been gone by now?" But there's still this this thing indeed that has to be talked about. Like, okay, what's the default set of of content types that you will have in a in a in a default uh, uh, demo photo site uh, when Plone Photo is is doing its things on the back end and organizing the content types? Because there there is still 
somewhere you could argue argument that there's still the need for the folder content type if you for example want to structure images and pdfs and other things that are used site-wide so like like the, a media library where you yeah. don't have any any visual pages in that subfolder but you do want to use it for organizing because if you don't have this folder then the the now the story would be yeah just create a page don't do anything on the page but the page is nowadays folderish and put all the images and pdfs there so that's that's a tricky ux user experience thingy uh, 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 what you uh, what happens if, if an, an, uh, a fresh editor uh, presses the add some add something and sees the content drop down list that the, the names there should be recognizable for the function that they will have and yeah. if you see a page you don't consider it to be only logical structuring for content in the back end and otherwise, if it's only a folder, then people would say, yeah, but where's the folder page? And then you would have to explain to people, but look, in a page, you put the f images and PDFs and other resources you are going to use on that context because that's, that's the new new story. So it's, it's, so the, yeah, it's the, tricky. The, it's tricky. When, when you add a listing block to a uh, document and you don't configure it, it just shows the content that is in the folderish document. Uh, but it's not there by default. And if you have a document, you can't select views like the album view yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. stuff like that, yeah. uh, which yeah. you have in folders. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and there is like one of the main arguments against um, default pages always was a training effort because you had to train your editors to, uh, to think about folders and default pages. Yeah, it, it was the most difficult. Really. It was the most and difficult it, thing it, to it, explain it, in trainings. Yeah. Exactly, uh, but the current setup is is not that much different and yeah. not much easier to explain to uh, to to yeah. students uh, during a training. So I'd, I'd love to see how how this yeah. issue will be solved by uh, yeah. by people who are creating uh, sites with Volto with documents and folders and different views and yeah. how they uh, solve that in trainings. But so Philip, 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 question: Do you do you know what happens when you put two planistas together to discuss community news? <laughs> they talk about default pages. They start, they start di discussing the development increases of uh, of default pages. We have to move on, Philip. Community yeah, news. One, thing. <laughs> one uh, more thing. One, migrations. Um, because, yeah. because when you migrate, you obviously lose your. Fo what we're doing for Plone Org is we're losing the folder, and instead of a folder, we're creating the document. Uh, if there is a default page, only if there is a default page, we're creating the document as a folderish uh, document, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, create that. So keep the UUID, so links to the document keep in place, but links to the folder are then broken. And also, you get the title of the document or the title of the folder. Which one do you want? Because in Plone, in Classic Plone, you can have the navigation. You have the title of the folder. But when you click on it and it opens up, you have the title of the document. Go to Plone Org. Uh, I, I know. Board. I should not. I should not. I should not feed the the development troll uh, <laughs> at least a few four minutes. But that's exactly. Yeah. It's not. A, it's not a bug. It's a feature filler because I've used that in the past multiple times to support navigation titles being the title of the folder. And then when you go to the uh, item itself, you see the default page, and there the editor could fill like three or four lines being the title of the of the of the page uh, where so, they done yeah. the same being yeah. there. Um, yeah, Wrap not up. possible in Volto out of the box at least. Yeah. But let's move on. Yeah. Um, there, there's a call uh, for translations of Volto because only Catalan, I see what you did there, Victor, uh, German, Portuguese, Spanish, and Japanese are okayish in their number of translations, like above 85 up to 98. Uh, so, again, Red Turtle, w w like three new foundation members organizing a conference, but uh, it's a, Italian is not under the uh, top five translated languages for Volto. Uh, that's a call for action, I think. There is yeah. a call for translators on communityplone.org. We'll link to that. And it's not rocket science. It's just yeah. translations. Yeah. So there's a new date for our first, hopefully, uh, in place live reel where we can meet each other, uh, uh, Plone Conference, the week of October 10th, and it's still planned for Namur, Belgium. Yay. Yeah, I, we hope that the, uh, the the organizing team in Belgium is up and running again. They uh, like 
almost two years ago now, uh, one and a half years ago, they were mostly down with COVID, uh, some severe, severe cases. I hope we know that they're well again, and we wish them uh, good luck with the organization. And uh, I know the team from Plo the by the Plon Foundation, Kim, I think is uh, part of that, uh, are busy uh, kicking off the organizational yeah. Yeah. stuff. Much earlier, much earlier, World Plon Day 2022 is coming up. Philip. Yes. April 27, it's going to be a 24-hour streaming event like last year. There's a YouTube streaming thing, and you can watch like 24 hours of Plone if you're into that. Obviously, all the videos are going to be online after World Plone, though, so you, so you don't have to drink coffee to stay up for 24 hours. The point why we mentioned that is not only... Uh, go there and uh, watch some of the talks, but you should submit something, uh, a case study, uh, talk to a friend about Plone. Like, um, we could do that. We could do a live episode of the podcast during one Plone Day. We have, we have I, I know. We had a 24 hour episode. No, no, yeah, you would like that. No, I know we, Riverside does have some some facilities that we, where we can uh, have a live audience and also uh, have a call in with with guests. So maybe we should. Exp that will be our, our March, April, two more podcasts. Yeah, so in in one or two podcasts, we we need to figure that out and maybe maybe experiment a bit with that and also submit something ourselves. I mean, we can request people to be active, but we could also. Good idea. Do it. We'll, we'll figure out something for a, a podcasting during World Plone Day. And it's at the end of the month, April 27th. So, oh no, there goes our shift again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but and also, if you, if you don't want to hear me talking about export import again, uh, submit your own talk, please. Good point. There's also some call, some sort of call for plan documentation writers as the, uh, we'll get that to in the development news that uh, there has been done uh, excellent more work on the documentation infrastructure setup. Um, but now it's really time to uh, to also get, get the contents of the documentation further up to date. But I haven't really seen any announcement or, or plans that. So maybe we'll, I'll have to figure that out and maybe we'll do something in our next episode in, in, in two weeks. Yeah. So, I, so to wrap yeah, this up, Philip, I'm the timekeeper again. We have to move on. Development yes. news. So what about classic clone? Is it merged yet, Fred? No, it's not merged, but it's creeping again, again to, to fixing the last bugs there. The, the real focus is now on, uh, on the ES6 uh, a rewrite it has done. Uh, most of the major components were working. Uh, one of the bugs I found about... A month ago, I got a ping uh, last week from Mike. Hey, can you check your issue that you sent? Because I think it's now fixed. So there are a lot of these small thingies are being fixed. Uh, um, and I really hope for Alpha 4 uh, that the ES6 branch is merged to master. And, and ideally, you wouldn't notice too much because uh, what is happening is that the, the previous JavaScript and mockup patterns are just swept out by... Uh, ES6, uh, uh, Webpack Module Federation combined, whatever, or Webpack once combined uh, 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 modules. But function functionally, there should not be a difference. You, you should still have tiny MCE, you should still have a date picker, you should still have a modal pattern, you should still have a drop down pattern. Of course, we hope and we expect and we already see that with the updated versions of tiny MCA and all the other JavaScript modules that now play nicely because we are also using ES modules uh, uh, that are, of course, uh, much more up to date. So the tiny MCA is the latest, latest, latest uh, 5.x tiny MCA, etc. But yeah. functionally, uh, uh, it should be at least the swap when it becomes uh, in the in the next uh, uh, alpha release. Or you have a classic site. Um, yeah. you, sh you should notice it, but not too much. We'll, so we'll that's do a uh, episode about that uh, once it's merged. Um, and people should definitely start using Alpha 4 uh, in their in their development projects really soon because there may be, as usual, upgrade and migration issues, uh, especially with the uh, ES6 uh, with the uh, JavaScript uh, registry stuff. Um, yeah. We tested it, but it's um, probably not yet perfect. So yeah, really if you really looking forward to yeah. that. Community-wise, if you want to talk with the people who are working on this, if you have your own ideas, if you're using a, 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 a Plone uh, 5.2 site and think about migrating to Plone 6, uh, 
Join them every Wednesday morning. There's a stand-up in the Classic UR channel on Discord. Discord is really has become, I think, our go-to place now for for direct live chatting, quick questions, etc. Um, it's a, yeah between nine and ten every Wednesday morning. Uh, Classic UI. Yeah. So, but there is obviously another uh, aspect of Plon Six that is not, uh, which is not released yet. Uh, so. Of, Volto stuff is happening, and as same as the uh, classic Plon team, uh, there is a Volto team meeting. Uh, I think once every two weeks, or yeah, it's it every, every yeah. I have to pronounce it correctly. Every other week, so other one week, week yes, one week no. Yeah, because if you say bi-weekly or every other week or twice a week, then those I've noticed in my English week. translation that everybody understands something different there. Yeah. Um, and also, the next photo team meeting is also uh, tomorrow morning. So if you want to know, if you want to listen in, if you're interested in 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 photo or plan or are already doing with uh, photo projects, but you are a bit scared or you think, yeah, well, I'll first try to use it and not uh, uh, dive too many do in the details, but try to listen in uh, with the people discussing how to how they are going to now finish photo for the Plone 6 release um, and check the photo, uh, sorry, check the front end photo channel uh, uh, tomorrow morning for more details. I think they're also using Discord for their meeting, but I'm not sure. And otherwise there will be a pointer there to a Google Hangout or the Zoom meeting or whatever. It's also surprising to me how many video systems we are in use nowadays. I always ask yeah. anybody I have contact with, sure. which of the 10 platforms uh, do you prefer to use? Yeah. Uh, Timo loves Slack. Uh, so uh, stuff is happening in the world of Volto. Uh, most importantly, Volto 15 is expected in the next one or two weeks. And uh, one of the major things that's going to happen there is the integration of Volto Slate into the core of Volto. Volto Slate being the uh, new Volto rich text editor block editor experience uh, that we've talked about already. So that is exciting. And also what also happened, uh, for example, was that the Volto docs are merged into the Plone 6 docs, which are available at 6 dash dev dash docs dot plone dot org um uh, the plone 6 docs that are still in development that's why there is a dev in there we just talked about yeah, that that's that's all that's a bit more technical about that so so they're not really like merged in but yeah. uh, the source of the, the source of the photo uh, uh docs uh was until now published on docs.photocms.com that is still the source of that is still in the photo uh, 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 repository as well, but it's it's on every commit or thing. There's some uh, uh, some people did some very clever things. I think it was Tibir who helped that with that, and of course Steve Percy as well, and some others that have now set up that the source of the docs is in the photo repo, but on every change it gets uh, replicated and merged into the final docs. And what you see as six at six dev uh, the uh, dash docs uh, plone.org is now kind of the the new documentation infrastructure that has, has also been set up uh, it has moved from restructured text to markdown with restructured text optionally uh, which is much friendlier for people uh, to edit um yeah and that's also what has been done the last month and uh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward or will check out some news that uh, uh yeah now the real effort also f in the direction of plan six will be filling the gaps and uh, rebuilding uh, uh, the documentation story for uh, uh, also the back end and how you start creating an add-on or how you do your scaffold yeah. and new plans set up. Stuff, but uh, it needs needs more work, obviously. Shall yeah. we uh, skip the build-out replacement? Yeah, we'll do that in two weeks, I think. We'll do that, that's also technical. Yeah, let's go to the add-ons. All right. Uh, like. Uh, last month, we talked about uh, composite page builders a lot. Uh, there is just uh, three tiny uh, follow-ups. Uh, number one, uh, something that I just mentioned uh, shortly was CMF content panels, products.cmf content panels, really old add-on, um, which was just migrated to Plone 6 uh, by me for a client uh, because they have like thousands and thousands of these. And it's, as we discussed last year, if you have one complex, uh, what, they're all complex, one complex yeah. page builder <laughs> tool, tool it, uh, the migration away from that to something that has a different architecture uh, is really hard. And not only technically, obviously, technically, yes, but also, um, 
if if the patterns are not the same, how do you change your content to uh, display the same uh, ideas that you, that you had when you created the first page? And if you don't want to do that with thousands and thousands of pages, the only solution is to migrate these uh, this add-on. And I did that for CMF content panels. There's no release yet. It's um, but it will. There will be a release that, and it will support Plone 6 in uh, Python 3. Uh, and the uh, migration is obviously with export import. And it, the, the migration is really simple, but uh, updating the package is was a bit uh, more uh, crazy. But uh, it, that worked fine, actually. Uh, there is also uh, merged uh, the work to upgrade collective cover to Plone 5.2 and Python 3 and Plone 6. Uh, was merged and a release 3.0 is probably coming soon thanks to all the people who did some work there mm -hmm. and not to forget oh yeah yeah work is done of course also for mosaic on the mosaic branch uh, there is a uh, mosaic branch already for plone 6 but then because it built so heavily on on the new uh, uh, it uses patterns and other things uh, uh, it, it's kind of waiting now a bit I think for the ES6 ESM uh, branch, but uh, Franco Pellegrini has done some excellent work also testing the module federation stuff uh, uh, that's used in general, uh, uh, also on Mosaic. Uh, Johannes Ragam is busy with it. Uh, Peter Holzer is looking at it. Mike is looking at it. I wish I had the time to look at it uh, 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 because I will also uh, lean on them a lot and want to test this stuff. Uh, because what I, yeah, compo the composite, the page builder story uh, is alive and kicking. Also for Plone uh, Six, whether you are using full blown uh, JavaScript Canvas Photo or whether you uh, want to stick uh, to Classic for a while longer and use the Mosaic HTML based uh, page builder system. So, Philip, yeah, I, I, uh, we had this huge page builder uh, discussion last month as a feature, and afterwards I was still thinking, I am missing stuff. And we, we also, I thought, we, we, I didn't answer really like, okay, collective content sections, is that another thing to do? I'll put a, quite a little of text on our uh, newsroom uh, homepage. Um, I'll just read uh, the last uh, uh, paragraph, I think. T to wrap up the much too long post wrap, for each of these page composition tools, it's also about uh, adoption and the add-on ecosystem. There are dozens of available tiles for Mosaic, and there are now also many more blocks for the photo block composit uh, composition system you can reuse. And I also see a future here for content sections. It has been developed from zero on and for Plone 6, which features Bootstrap 5 and ESM JavaScript. Those are major and important parts of the new standard library that the integrators can and should use in Plone 6. Uh, sorry about that. You are doing that, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, add-ons that render their, their normal views nice and consistent and also in a content section like a tile or block uh, uh, provide much less risk of CSS grid layout and other JavaScript uh, conflicts. Um, and, and that's, I think, the part of, there are, are like, there we have a lot of niche uh, uh, page builders had in the in the Plone community. There are now two or three or four that, that bubble up with the most, uh, 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 with the nicest ecosystem at the moment. And those two are also updated uh, uh, because they use all the new I JavaScript and CSS infrastructure stuff. I mean, we're talking now about JavaScript all the time, but if you look at the CSS specs, there are also great things. There are two, two major updates coming for, for CSS uh, this year, which is container queries and also uh, um, uh, co cascading layers, composition layers, where you can finally say, look, this group of CSS statements should not be overridden by uh, more specific statements uh, uh, underneath. So there, there are two, also in CSS, you, after 20 years, yeah, I think it's 20 years, 2000, 2002, we had the first, I mean, that's why Plone started. Plone started because there was the CSS spec and you could re restyle your whole website nicely. So also in CSS land, there's a lot, a lot of stuff happening and it's, it's still nice to see that with all these page builders, uh, we are still trying to integrate the latest technology. Excellent. Um, I, I was planning to show CMF content panels just for the fun of it, but I'm refraining because it is, if you, if, sit, we're mentioning these old systems. Um, if you choose something um, 
it is a good decision to stick with, uh, unless you, you're really heavy into clone development and you really know what you're doing or you have very, very specific requirements, it's a good idea to stick with one of the very established uh, solutions um, that is mostly Mosaic. Uh, and once it's migrated, maybe Collective Cover. Yeah. Um, yeah, with, yes. with, the, with, with what I indeed said, collective content sections is very cool in this regard because it's really placed nice by reusing the default view from the content things, from the content items it contains. That also kind of that drops the bar for, for, uh, uh, for complexity. So, Philip, your turn. You can still, you can still, you had plans. Collective export import. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, Tell there us. Are two, uh, two things that are happening in export import. Uh, number one was uh, we added uh, support for workflow history export import. So who published the, uh, the site and when. And also support for redirects. So aliases are exported and imported. Obviously, the redirection tool already has a import uh, functionality as CSF, uh, CSV, I think. You can upload that. Uh, but now you can use export import to migrate your uh, aliases if you want that. Uh, but uh, more excitingly, probably for uh, some use cases, and there will be a word of warning after that, mm -hmm. is that we uh, I'm working on support for exporting and importing revisions or versions, if you know what I mean, uh, content uh, revisions, content history, uh, editing history of content. And... Um, so uh, that is a fun thing. First, maybe uh, exporting revisions for archetypes through the REST API was completely broken because of, I mean, obviously there is not a single test because there was every revision was exactly the same. Uh, so unless you test for the content, the test should have failed, uh, but that is fixed now. And uh, importing is, it's importing each uh, the, the oldest revision by creating the item and then creating a revision and uh, with the old uh, modification date and the old change node so that the technical solution for the import is really simple and it works fine and you can migrate your revisions from archetypes to dexterity from plan 4 to plan 6. Um, but a word of warning, uh, don't do that um, because uh, it is... It is a really good idea to lose old content unless there's a really, I don't know, a pressing reason to keep them for, for example, I have a client uh, who uses revisions, that's who I'm doing, doing mm -hmm. that work for, yeah. he uses revisions uh, to keep track of changes in legal contracts. Um, and yep. these these obviously are a important part of the clone the application in this case, and not okay. Uh, Paul did this change five years ago, and uh, then uh, Sally did this change uh, three years ago, and uh, oh, that's really interesting, uh, because that's not interesting. And you should, if you do a migration, should ask your client, please let me lose the mic the history, because otherwise you're and. and it, it is a lot of work. It's not super straightforward. It's not merged yet, and it might that it might break in some cases. And uh, your database, if you lose migrations, can uh, shrink significantly. I just working on a migration where the database was sh shrank from fifteen gigabytes to under one gigabyte. So that is impressive. Yeah, it uh, really depends on the on the on the usage pattern. Uh, yeah. And like that's you have to have a, a real need your. Your, if you use the website as a kind of uh, 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 also in a business process, like what you said with the legal legal requirements, then those revisions are ideal. But normally, if you work with a small team of editors, uh, it is cool. It's nice to see if somebody changed a, a certain sentence last week or you have discussions and you can see back like, oh, but we changed this paragraph to something like this and this and this. But it's it's a normally it's a convenience feature that's there that can be that can be upgraded to be a real uh, 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 important uh, thing if you start storing or editing legal text in Plone. But it all depends on on the purpose of the of the site. And indeed, this use case I had it like four years ago when I did the first migration of a Plone site where we would say, look. You will lose the the history. At first, it was like everybody was like, "No, no, that's not." And then I tried to figure out, and it was indeed what you described, like 
uh, um, create the item, but with all this revision, and then just reapply history by creating the, the, the uh, saving new versions of that context item during the migration to restore the original state. But it's uh, very risky, very complex, and if you don't need it, uh, um, uh, throw away the, the history. And uh, I mean, you're not throwing away the content of your website because the the, the latest version is is still there. Uh, and then continue again editing in, in the next editing spree, and then you will have a history again on, on that location. Yeah. yeah. But um, it, it works. So if you really need that um, as a branch uh, that already has it, haven't written a single test, but I tested it against the Plon4 archetypes to Plon6 dexterity thing, and it worked fine. I still need to look at a lot of edge cases, so that's not finished yet. But if, if, if you really have that requirement, and that's why I think that it's good news, because some systems are stuck on a Plon4 archetypes, maybe system, because these, like like the client I talked about, uh, there it's it's a really hard requirement yeah. to keep this content. And it's, um, I know Chrissy did some work uh, to, to export and import them uh, with the JSONify and the exactly. Transmogrifier. Yeah. Uh, also uh, not a very uh, yeah. super accessible sy uh, yeah. system to do migrations, but obviously all migrations are, um, are, are not super, super straightforward if, if they're reach a certain level of complexity. I think, Philip, Philip even if you would have this under, under, under a checkbox in the user interface of export import, it's still, there will be more there. So this, this kind of special things will not be available just with a, a checkbox and then everything will be right. You will have to dive into this if you really want to, to support this. Yeah. So let's wrap this up. We let's wrap uh, up. reached a uh, half an hour. Um, anything else you want to add? Or no, I think dark here? it's getting darker. It's still light here. I'm, I'm rather, I had it as a subject, but I can, I can probably do that in the next uh, uh, podcast. Uh, uh, I had some very good experience now with updating my, my workplace here uh, with some uh, uh, daylight uh, 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 or, or yeah, emulating sunlight during, during the winter. I had a first real in, uh, in-person meetup last week again here at a local Rotterdam Python meetup was chatting afterwards with a few devs and one of them said, yeah, this in, in the winter and then I have to sit behind my end in the morning and I get tired and it takes a while after I was sort of like, oh, look, did you, this is my, did you check, check out if you have enough, if you have enough light in your uh, normal uh, uh, room where you sit all day, also in the winter. Um, um, but that I'll save the, the details for that uh, to the next version. I feel a bit uh, like uh, evangelism about this, but I, I keep getting it also from people that, that are not having a, a, an, uh, an IETC, for example, for me, where it counts double, but also for normal people. If you're tired in, uh, uh, in the winter or in early spring before the light goes back up and you're sitting in your room all day, but you have like only two or three uh, uh, lamps, uh, consider looking for, for more brightness. But I'll, I'll, I'll do some s photos and some screencasts and uh, talk more about that next time. Yeah. But obviously, the best solution is to just switch off your laptops and go outside while the sun is still shining. So people uh, will uh, close this podcast uh, with the wish of, for you to go outside and not watch another YouTube video. Um, we hope to see you next month and uh, stay safe and well. Yeah, and, especially uh, this time, stay safe. Uh, it's yeah. uh, it's challenging times uh, in the world. Let's yeah. keep it at so, that. Uh, mentally, don't don't doom scroll. It is not good for your mental health. Okay, Philip, okay. take care, and we'll see each other again hopefully mid March. Yay! Bye. Bye, Bye people. Thanks for listening. <laughs>